The chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan in Nasarawa State, Joseph Masin, has been kidnapped. His kidnap was confirmed by the police commissioner in Nasarawa State, that's Bola Lunge, on Thursday morning. Lunge told journalists in Lafia that the bishop was taken from his house in Bunkan City in Lafia around 12.39 a.m. on Thursday. He said that the police have mobilized officers as well as hunters to free the cleric. Corroborating the incident, Johanna Samari, a former Khan secretary in the state, said the bishop was abducted by the attackers at midnight at his residence. He added that the abductors took the Khan chairman away on a motorcycle. Joining us now via Skype is a security analyst and the former assistant director, DSS, Dennis Amakre. Thank you for joining us on the news. Good morning. Good morning to you. Even with the COVID-19 pandemic, we're having instances like this, the uh, chairman of Khan in Nasrawa State being kidnapped. What's your initial reaction to uh, this continuing uh, kidnapping? I think we have not been able to uh, address this kidnap issue in Nigeria. Um, a lot of money has gone into it. It's a very, very lucrative business. And then those who go into it have not been brought to book. Uh, between 2011, I think, uh, and now, we've spent uh, billions, billions of Naira. And uh, those who have been arrested have not even been sent to jail. So it's a matter of... Um, uh, coming out with a very, very strong uh, 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 strategy on dealing with it. Either we are going to go for zero, zero tolerance or discourage people that uh, you cannot be paying uh, uh, ransom and uh, make sure that um, it becomes very unattractive uh, to, uh, to these guys. Uh, his abductors, we understand, has contracted, uh, contacted the family and are demanding 20 million naira ransom. Do you expect they will get this money? Well, it has been a situation in Nigeria where people have been paying. You see, that's why I'm saying that there should be zero, zero tolerance. Because if people are paying, um, they will ask for it. If they have a very good negotiator... Uh, they can negotiate it down to very, very, the barest minimum. Or, in fact, uh, we've had cases where uh, religious leaders have been uh, uh, kidnapped and uh, without paying the ransom, they were killed, they were beheaded. Uh, so these are things that we have to consider. Either we want to take some collateral damages and make sure that we don't pay for ransom anymore, or we strengthen the security system where we have to track down these people. Because... Collecting that ransom is the critical part of kidnapping. All right. Um, a recent report by SBM Intelligence suggests um, that Nigerians have paid over 7 billion naira's ransom to kidnappers between 2011 and March of this year. Does this shock you? And could it be the reason uh, this uh, kidnapping continues to thrive, perhaps? Yeah, it doesn't shock me at all. And that's why I was saying... Uh, that when people continue paying, um, even in dollars, remember Evans in Lagos? Uh, the guy uh, was collecting his ransom in dollars, and uh, he was being paid. The problem is that a lot of people who are kidnapped don't inform the security agents. And then they will go ahead and negotiate by themselves. And then, of course, when the ransoms are demanded, they go ahead and pay quietly and kept, kept quiet uh, without allowing anybody to mention it. But a lot of money is going into this. And I think we, this is the time we have to face uh, uh, kidnapping and then to stop it. All right, sir. Thank you very much for uh, your insight on that news piece this morning. Thank you for having me.